Down the field. Hollywood. Let me think about that one. 77 yards. Whoa. Who is this kid? Let's do it. All right, man, we're recording. Big show. Welcome back to another episode of the Steve Weatherford Show. When I say another episode, we've really only done one. Um, we took four months off and really, really not just re-strategized, but man, for the first time in my life, I was really still and I thought about, man, if I'm going to continue to do something and not just my podcast, but all areas of my life, what do I choose to do and what do I want to go all in on? And so I've chosen to go all in on this podcast. So this is our second episode. Um, and we, we not only rebranded it, but man, I got really, I got really, really clear. Like I said, if I'm going to do this podcast and I'm going to go all in, what's it going to be about? And what for the people that are watching, for the people that are listening, like, what do they want? Why would they come here? And I really boiled it down to five core values um, and then also an operating system. And so if you're watching this right now or you're listening to this right now, this is what I want you to know that you'll get by coming back for every single episode. But in the Steve Weatherford show, I value and you will get freedom, discipline, growth, faith and relationships inside of this podcast and the operating system with which I want to bring those philosophies, virtues, values, non-negotiables and standards for those core values is with a sense of urgency and integrity. I'm never going to share something with you or tell you to do something that I'm not already doing in my life. Like this is a podcast for people who really want the smoke. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm not here to be your friend, although I would love to have a relationship with you. I'm here to give you freaking truth, man. And I'm here to do it in a shorter period as I can because I want to help you get what maybe took me six or 10 years. Man, I'm believing with the right type of mentor and the right type of truth. This revelation can transform transform you, but it's going to require you to be disciplined. It's going to require you to have faith and trust. And it's also going to, to require you to operate in, in a level of freedom that maybe you haven't earned or you don't have yet, but you have to believe it's almost kind of like, man, you don't wear the outfit of the job you have, man, put the outfit on the job of the job that you want and start to practice imitating what it would take for you to be that type of person. And so we wrote a whole new mission statement. When I say we, it's me. Um, but I do have people that speak into my life and, and have really helped me to get clear on not just what this podcast is about, but like, what is the Weatherford way? Like, what's the, what's the constitution of Steve that, that sets him apart from other people? And so our new mission statement on the Steve Weatherford show is that this is not a podcast. This is a movement transforming each listener into an agent of change. Each episode will civilize your mind. It will make savage your body. It will awaken your spirit, and it's going to give you permission to go out there and get it, but also the tools for you to be able to unlock a radical boldness inside of you so you can live what's possible in your faith, your family, your finances, and your future. So it's something that I wrote about four weeks ago, and I'm... I'm I'm really ruminating on that because as I come up with different ideas for different YouTube episodes, I don't want it to be something where I'm like, man, there's three episodes that I need to produce per week. I need to become a content creator. I don't want that to be at it at all because I, when I decided to do this thing, I decided to, do, to go fall in, but to go full in on something that I'm truly, truly passionate about, not just like another mission of Instagram or Snapchat or TikTok or YouTube. I don't need another mission, man. I've gone on enough of those. And I believe if you're listening to this right now, you've been on enough missions that have brought you to where you're at right now. Man, you, it doesn't say, hey, man, let's live a mission-driven life. It said, let's live a purpose-driven life. So with that being said, I'm going to pray real quick, and, um, and let's get into this week's episode. And what I'm, what I'm believing you were going to take away from this episode is how to become a dangerous man, how to not care about what anybody else thinks about you, and how to keep the main thing the main thing, how to be on purpose sustainably. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for YouTube. Thank you for podcasts. Thank you for the people that are listening right now. I'm just praying and believing you're going to give them eyes to see and ears to hear your voice and not my own on this podcast. So Holy Spirit, we give you permission to increase and decrease all of us and just give us the ability to eliminate distractions. If you're in the gym, if you're in the car, if you're in your office right now, just turn, turn the volume up and just allow this, allow this episode to speak to you in a really special way. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 
All right, man. So I'm being supported right now um, off camera by a guy I like to call Big Show. And you guys are going to get a, a chance to hear a little bit more from him. But on this particular episode, um, I really want to teach you guys how I became my most dangerous man. And, and I just recently spoke at, uh, at a big men's conference that, uh, that my mentor, Pastor Ivy Marsh, um, he has an event every single year. And so men from all over the country come in. And it was about six or 700 men in Alabama. And, um, and I, I spoke there last year and he asked me to come back this year and he said, Hey man, I would love for you, uh, to speak whatever's on your heart. And I'm like, man, Ivy, I, I love you, man, but I want to make sure that, that what I prepare and what I share with your man is really in line with your vision. Cause I really want to serve you. And he said, um, you know what? I want you to share with these men, what you did when you decided to get really, really serious about following Jesus. And what did that look like? What, like, what are those steps? And I want you to share that. And so I had 30 minutes with these men from all over, all over the country. And, um, and I want to share with you what I shared with them. But first, first, I have a riddle for you. There's three, three frogs that are sitting on a log. One of those frogs decides to jump in the water. How many frogs are left on the log? I'm going to sit here. I'm going to let you ruminate on that for a minute. And some of you might be saying, well, well, there's two because one of them decided to jump off the log. Well, you're wrong because how many times in our lives have we decided to do something that we never took action on? So there's three frogs that are still sitting on that log because making a decision is not enough. I want you right now as you see this or you hear this to just decide that I'm not going to be a decider. I want you to decide and then to take action because coming on and listen to like a great podcast where somebody has a really compelling or profound thought or, or a tactical takeaway from you and you learn it, but then you don't apply it. How do you ever expect that to change your tomorrows? You and I have to like go and get the knowledge, but then practice it in ourselves. And when we practice it in ourselves, that knowledge becomes wisdom. But we're the ones that make that conversion of knowledge to wisdom because we got to do the work. And I want you to be a dangerous man. But in order for you to do that, you got to be more than just a guy that decides. You got to be a guy that takes freaking action. <clears throat> and one other thought that, that I had and I want to share with you guys, because I have two sons. And, and if you don't, if you were just like stumbled upon, upon this this episode on YouTube or on, you know, on podcasts, wherever in the universe you can find things like this. You might not know, I have six kids. I've been married for 15 years. Um, I met my wife when I was on my official recruiting visit to the University of Illinois. I got a scholarship to play football there. Um, that's kind of like the, the Wikipedia version of that. But the reason that I say those things is to give context to this kind of this thought that I want to I pose to everybody listening and watching this right now is the chains that you and I decide to break don't get placed on our sons and our daughters. So if you have no idea who I am, a little bit of my backstory is um, I struggled mightily with porn and with pills. But the reason I struggled with those porn and those pills is because I really struggled with worthiness for a lot of my life. And I have extreme ADHD. I've, I'm, I'm very, still to this day, you know, like I'm still very, very hyperactive. Um, and, I, and I really kind of made up about myself that that was a bad thing when I was younger because in Sunday school, I always got like put in the corner and they said, man, Steve, I need you to sit down and sit on your hands and don't speak. And so like my activity and my energy was a bad thing because I disrupted Sunday school. And then I knew that I disrupted my family dynamic because I have two brothers and a sister and I'm definitely different than them. But it wasn't until I went to kindergarten and I realized just how different that I am. So I don't know if as you watch this or you listen to this, you've ever felt like you're like you're an alien and you don't fit in maybe in a community or in a family or in a group or like maybe just in general, you don't feel like you've ever met anybody who feels or thinks or acts like you do. And it can be really alienating, especially if your uniqueness is really noticeable. And, and when you have ADHD, it's pretty freaking noticeable. So I don't know if anybody out there connects with that, or maybe there's some uniqueness about you that maybe other people just don't understand. And it was around that age, because I got sent to the principal's office the first 
five days in a row. And it was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where the, the principal didn't have to call your parents and they could freaking take that paddle to you. And I'm telling you what, right now, man, they wore me out. I got spanked by the principal and the vice principal in the same day because he was busy the second time that I went in there. And so I say those things to say that I decided in that moment that the difference about me was bad. And then you fast forward a couple of years later to like eight, nine years old. And that's when I was, I was playing sports and it was noticeable that that ADHD was transform was transferring into really, really good athlete because of an abundance of energy and, and the way that my brain is created is like, I make split second decisions really quick. So that was the one place that I realized I'm different, but this might be good, but it wasn't something that I realized it was after the games, parents would come up to me and say, hey, Steve, we're so glad that you showed up. Like last year when you weren't on our team, we got beat by this team and we just beat them by three goals. Man, we're so glad you're on your team. And it was first time that I realized, wait a minute, people are celebrating and encouraging me and like honoring me and holding me high. And all I did was go out there and win. So I decided in my mind, when I win or I help others around me win, then I'm valuable. And so this really kind of created a, a dynamic to me, like I'm only worthy when I win. And I say those things to say, I want to, I want to help you to create a dangerous man out of yourself. But until you kind of go back and look on your childhood and those defining moments that in that, in that moment, you decided that's, that's what I want, or that's what I'm capable of. And, and I made an agreement with myself that, and, and I didn't even realize that I did it, but I, but I said, I'm only valuable when I win. And, and that really kind of set me on a trajectory of like really, really feverishly developing myself, but because other people's opinion of me determined how I felt about me. I was actually the opposite of a dangerous man. And I, I grew myself, you know, to be big and to be strong and to be athletically dominant and physically imposing. But I had a God-sized hole inside of me that I was so desperate for the affirmation of other people, for the love of other people. I was such a people pleaser. And this, this lasted all the way up into 36 years old, guys. So hear me when I say this, or 35 years old, I'm 39 now. So I've literally been walking in freedom for about four years now. And so I don't know how long you've been kind of like on the Steve Weatherford train, if we can call it that, you know, maybe you were a Giants fan or a fitness fan. And then you've been around for these last couple of years and you're like, man, Steve's tune is, is, is shifting. You know, it used to be all about abs and arms and money and clout and fame. Um, but it's different now. Um, so I just want you all to know like this podcast episode and these different tactical things that I'm going to walk you through and talk you through are super duper important, but there's only one way to permanent change. There's only one way to really shift things in your life. And I'm not sure what that is later on in this episode, but I'm going to get right into this, man. So who am I? If this is the first time you've ever seen my face or heard my voice, I'll tell you really quickly. My Wikipedia page is my name is Steve Weatherford. I played in the NFL for 10 years. I went to the University of Illinois. I was a two-sport All-American in football and track there. Um, I played for the Saints. I played for the Jags. I played for the Jets. I played for the Chiefs. I played for the Giants. I won a Super Bowl with the Giants. I was twice named the fittest man in the NFL. I won a Super Bowl. Um, I've got six kids now and man, I'm, I think we're, we're kind of sort of believing for a seventh. I don't know. We're praying about that, but things are shifting in my life, man. And, uh, and man, I'm just so hungry to grow. And that the, the core values that I mapped out for you guys, um, for this podcast and what we're rooted on now is freedom, discipline, growth, family, and faith, because those things are important to me. So I know if I'm, if I'm coming to you to have conversations about something that I'm not passionate about, I know I'm not going to be sitting in this seat very long. And I know that I'm not going to move you forward in your life. But man, if there is anything that I'm walking in right now, it's freedom. If there's anything that I'm discipling myself and practicing myself in daily, it's discipline. And if there's one thing I've noticed about myself from season to season to season is that I value growth. Like, yeah, I think trophies are great. I think it's great to earn money. I think it's great to do this. But at the end of the day, man, what I've really noticed is it wasn't about the Super Bowl trophies. It wasn't about the contract extensions. It wasn't about being on TV shows. It was actually growing. So once I got to those things, I noticed that they didn't feel the God-sized hole inside of me. But one of the things that I did really enjoy was getting better and growing and understanding that like every season of my life, I can choose an area of my life to identify and say, I want to get great at that and then find someone 
in this earth and connect with them through the interwebs and ask them, how did you get great at that? And how can I do that too? And it's easier now than it has ever been ever in the history of the earth. I grew up in the eighties and the nineties, man. So I went to go like, try to train my body. You couldn't go to the internet. There were not apps. People didn't have like downloadable eBooks like I do. Um, it was very difficult. So if you were going to develop your body, man, you had to really, really want it. And you had to really, really pursue knowledge and mentorship. I remember standing in the corner of the gym, you know, as a 14 year old kid and having no idea what I was doing in the gym. And then we're not like, it was muscle magazines was the only resource that I have. But if you'll remember muscle magazines don't have video. So how do you actually see how people do the bench press and how do you see the tempo? How do you see the angles? Like all the things that really are truly important in development, just not just in your muscles. Like it's great to read somebody's testimony in a book, but where's that step-by-step -step of how they became the most dangerous version of themselves? Like how did they boil it down and get rid of all the distractions, all the things that don't matter to us? I don't know if you've seen that movie Fight Club, but man, how many of us have like worked so hard to make money, to buy things, to impress people that we don't like? Like I was so guilty of that. Other people's opinions ruled my freaking life. And because of like, trauma that I experienced when I was 12, I was sexually abused. And then I was introduced to porn six months later, man, some, some really like powerful and deep purpose questions pop up in your brain. And also some weird questions pop up in your brain. Like when you get abused like that, you know, a little 12 year old boy starts to ask himself like, well, since this happened to me, like, does this make me gay now? And so like, there's you might not connect with like that specific trauma, but I know there's something happened in your childhood and maybe it wasn't horrific and heinous like this, and, or maybe it was, but we've all had things that have happened in our past that ended up becoming defining moments that predict our behavioral patterns as adults. And I'm believing that this episode and not just this knowledge, but you actually doing, making more than just the decision, but taking action to become a dangerous man, to be able to identify what those things are. And then in the name of Jesus, rebuke them and tear them down. Because at the end of the day, man, the reason that I wear this shirt and the reason that I live my life the way that I do right now is I'm walking in full freedom. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to do a podcast episode or a YouTube channel that I think a lot of people are going to like. To be honest with you, I think there, there will be a fair amount of hate in the comment section of this video. I'm totally okay with that. Like I've signed up for that. I'm not doing this to be divisive. I'm doing this to bring truth to people. I'm doing this because this is the thing that set me free. And I, I will for the rest of my life until they put dirt on my body, I will be speaking this truth. It can look a lot of different ways but I will be speaking this singular truth in this one opportunity that we all have for permanent change. Um, so I'm gonna get into this episode. I'm jumping around a little bit, but I'm just excited to be back on the mic, man. The, the episode that I did last was more like, kind of like schooling you guys up on where I've been and what's been going on. But now, man, I feel like I have so much inside of me that I wanna share. So if I'm skipping around a little bit, it's because your boy's got a little ADHD. So buckle up and try to stick with me, man. I apologize. Um, so where did I start my process of, of becoming like a free man, like a dangerous man in the kingdom? And when I say a dangerous man, I mean the type of person who is so clear on who they are and more than that. And this is the dangerous part. You can get really, really clear about who you are and you can be a dick. I mean, I'm just keeping it real. Like I know a lot of like, and especially like it happens like when you get older and they're like, oh, that's just the way grandpa is or oh, that's just the way Bill is, you know? Like you can know who you are, but you can still be just like undesirable as a relationship in people's lives. But when you become really dangerous is when you know who you are and whose you are, meaning I'm going to reintroduce myself. I gave you my Wikipedia version earlier, but I want to give you my new identity, my new contract, my new declaration of independence. And this statement is the thing that sets me apart from everybody else in the world. My name is Steve Weatherford. I'm a man of integrity, honor, and accountability. I'm a son and a warrior of the one most high. Yes, you are. Come on, big show. I'm getting an echo from the back, man. appreciate that. So I'll break this down. And about four years ago when past, or four years ago is when I really got serious about this. And when I was speaking a few weeks at Alabama, this is where I started because I knew that there was nothing that I could achieve that would make me feel better about me because I had already done some unbelievable things. And so I, I, I got clear with myself and I said, you know what? 
Steve, today, when you wake up, if you can be a man of integrity, honor, and accountability, today is a win. It's not about your to-do list. It's about your to-be list. What are you going to be today? Because you and I both know that when we're on our deathbed 50, 60, 70 years from now, God willing, it's not going to be what we conquered or what we created that's going to give us fulfillment. That's not going to be the gift that we give to other people. I know the greatest gift that I can give my sons and my daughters are going to be breaking free from porn, breaking free from worthiness, breaking free from all of the things that the world has placed on me that we're defining moments in a good or a bad way. It says in Hebrews, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm believing that right now, this can be a defining moment for you, but you have to do more than decide. You have to take action. You have to, after this episode, I don't know what that contract is for you. I don't know what that personal declaration is for you that sets you apart from everybody else. But for me, the reason I chose integrity, honor, and accountability is previous to creating this for myself. I wasn't the man in the shadows that I said I was in the light. And I know we all kind of know what that is. We all have this version of ourselves that we want to be. And we show that version to other people. We show that version to Instagram, but we all know who we are in the shadows. And it just used to tear me up that, that I had like a pill or a porn problem, but then I was still speaking on stages that I was still doing a podcast that I was still like giving people life advice to be disciplined and focused, but I knew that I was a fraud and a phony. And so I decided in that moment, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm going to be a man of integrity today, just one day at a time. And then integrity, honor, and accountability. And I chose honor because I struggled so mightily with worthiness because I felt dirty and I felt ashamed of things that happened to me. And because of that, I picked up these different coping mechanisms and pills and porn and these different addictions that helped kind of get my mind off of what, off of the darkness. And, um, and for that reason, I needed affirmation from other people. I needed people to tell me how awesome I was. And sometimes even when they were doing that, because I felt so dirty about myself, I would say, man, if they knew you know, this, or they knew that they could never love me and they would leave me. And so I, I struggled with the spirit of rejection that people were going to leave me if they really knew who I was. And I'll tell you this, man, I'm 39 years old. And the most powerful gift that I've ever had is being like fully, like spiritually and emotionally naked with another man and being fully accepted and loved because that's the scariest thing, man. And that's why I believe that men don't do relationship the way that God intended it is because we're scared. And so the reason I chose honor is because for the rest of my life, I want to be the type of person that walks into the room. And for, I used to be the type of man when I'd walk in, I'd be like, Hey, everybody, here I am. Look at what I'm wearing. Look at my muscles. Look at my watch because I needed that attention. And now I've dedicated my life when I step into a room of acknowledging every other person. So I walk into a room. It's not like, Hey, here I am. I walk into a room. I said, Hey, there you are, man. I noticed this amazing thing about you. Keep doing that. That's awesome, man. I'm so glad that you're here. Hey, you know, that one thing you did for me last year, man, it was amazing. My wife really appreciated that and really acknowledging and noticing other people and that that's what an honorable man does he makes it about other people he doesn't it's not because he receives honor and so that's what something that i wanted to create in myself i wanted to train in myself and so i created a declaration of independence this is what's going to set me aside from the world because you and i both know man and integrity is very very rare and honor is very very rare especially like in the social media sphere of things everybody's trying to gobble up as much as much attention i was guilty of doing that as well you know now when you shift things and you're like man what can i do to raise your ship up you know the supernatural thing happens man is like if you help enough people people are going to turn around and look back at you and be like, you know what, dude, what can I do to move your dreams forward? What can I do to make it happen in your life? And I sure appreciate you being an encourager and an honorer in my life. And so that's why I chose honor and accountability because I struggled with such a worthiness. The reason that I chose accountability as my new declaration of independence, the thing that set me apart from the world is because I felt like I had to like embellish every single thing that I did. An example, when I was like 15 years old, the first time that I bench, bench pressed 135 pounds, like for my gym brothers, you know, that's a 45 on each side and that's like a monumental day. Um, and I remember the first time 
that I bench pressed that. And I was so jacked up. And I remember getting in my car, just getting ready to tell my dad, dad, I did it. I bench pressed 135. And right before I was going to let him, I was going to tell him that I increased the number to 155 pounds because I just wanted to make sure that my dad would be impressed and proud of me. Right. And I know that we've all done that in different areas of our life where we've just embellished or made things a little bit better than really what they were. And I'm going to tell you why, why we do that is because we, we need people to tell us that we're worthy. We need people to tell us that we're loved. We need people to tell us that we're enough. And I was so desperate for my daddy to tell me I'm a good boy. And I honor my father. My dad didn't do anything wrong. He raised me in the way that his father raised him. And here's the deal. My dad is the most faithful person maybe that I've ever met. And so like what he didn't give me and like rubbing my back and being really feely and touchy and telling me that he's proud of, man, later on in life, I'm, I'm realizing, man, his greatest gift to me was his faithfulness. My dad was my coach from four until 18. My dad didn't even play soccer. My dad never missed a college game. He would drive 17 hours to Penn State just to watch his, his son kick a football. Dude, I'd have four plays a game. But I never really valued that when I was younger because it wasn't flashy. Faithfulness isn't flashy, but man, I'm telling you what, that's a gift that I want to give my sons. That's a gift that I want to give my daughter. That's a gift that I want to give my friends. I want to be faithful. And to me, I didn't get to notice that. And so that might be something that like later on in life, that actually ends up becoming part of my, my declaration of independence in the constitution. Like what are the values, the virtues, the standards, the non-negotiables, the commitments that run your life? I believe that's the greatest thing that you and I can ever get clear on. But before you get clear on your constitution, you have to get clear on what your declaration of independence is. And so as you listen to this episode, I hope this is speaking to you. Um, and like I said at the, the beginning of this, I don't want you to just listen to this and gain knowledge. I want you to listen to this, receive the knowledge, and then put the knowledge into action. Don't be a frog that's on a log. Be a frog that says, you know what? I'm not 100% sure about this, but I want freaking change and I'm going to do what it takes. What I'm asking you to do right now costs zero dollars. What I'm, cost, what I'm asking you to do right now is an investment. And it's an investment not in tomorrow. This is an investment in your eternity. If you want to become a dangerous man to the point where you walk in a room and you set the temperature, when you walk into a room and the atmosphere changes, like, do you want to be a carrot? Do you want to be an egg? Or do you want to be a being? Adversity is going to happen to all of us. Like the temperature in life is going to increase for all of us. There's no avoiding that, guys. But what happens when you get plopped into the heat? You know, like what happens when a carrot gets plopped into to, to hot water? It gets freaking soft. Like where in your life have you been a carrot? And I'm, I'm not calling you out to make you feel bad. I'm calling you out because you can do better. You can be better. You can, you can be your best. And that's part of about what being a dangerous man is all about. That's what this podcast is about. I'm not here to like, like pillow talk with you guys. Like, I love you enough to keep it real with you. I love you enough to know I only got about 30 minutes with you. So I'm going to bring you right into the smoke because this is where I'm living. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Or are you an egg? Pop you right into the hot water. You know what an egg does? an egg gets hard and an egg will crack. I'm believing that as you hear my voice in the name of Jesus, that you are, you are going to receive the anointing of being a being, being an agent of change, being the type of king that walks into a room. And because you already had your temperature of your life and every area of it predetermined, when you walk into a room, people notice you and the temperature in the room raises and the atmosphere shifts because things that you believe in also become very apparent to other people just because of how you be. So I'm just believing that when I walk into a room, there will be a day when people forget that I ever played football, forget any of those achievements of my life. And, and in a while I walk in and say, there goes a man of integrity, honor, and accountability. There goes a man that sold out for Jesus Christ. That, that's my aim. But in order for that to happen, I have to do what my dad did for me. I have to be faithful. Can't be just a year. Can't be just a month. Can't just be an episode. It has to be a lifetime, man, because I know that some people will listen to this podcast and they'll hear me, but they won't take action. But I'm believing that a seed will get planted. And I'm believing maybe a year, maybe six months, maybe a month from now, you're gonna be like, you know what? That one thing, that weird 
weird dude with the Jesus is King shirt was talking about. And I'm ready for that, man, because I'm, I'm tired of doing this thing on my own. I've tried it six different ways and I'm failing every single way. And I feel worse about myself every different time that I tried to do it a different way. I'm done trying, man. Well, if that's you, I want to speak into your life right now because the season for deciding is over. God created us to be a thermostat and not a thermometer. And the question I have for you is how can you set the temperature in a room if you don't know what the temperature is in your life? You know, we all want to go into the room and be the guy that like shifts it in the direction that it should go or that we want it to go or that we desire it to go. But not enough of us live that temperature in the shadows when people are on around, because when you walk into a room and you are who you say that you are, you don't have to re-remind yourself how to act. It just comes out of who you are. But that doesn't happen without training. You know, four years ago when I decided, man, I'm going to I'm going to train and, and disciple and, and just get better at being a man of integrity, honor and accountability. I, dude, I wrote it with an expo marker, like a dry erase marker. I wrote it on my mirror. And it was the first thing that I re-reminded myself of in the morning, because when you wake up, the world's already on me, man, because I had 35 years thinking a certain type of way that, you know, I'm, I'm this and I'm that, and I'm an addict and I can't do this and I'm not good with this. But then when you wake up and you're, and you stop reminding yourself of what you were, and you start reminding yourself of who you're training yourself to be. And you do that long enough and consistent enough and faithful enough. You're no longer trying to be a man of integrity, honor, and accountability. It's just who you are. So I'm asking you, I'm pleading with you. I'm requesting of you. Join this fight. Stop doing it your own way. Like, get clear on who you are and whose you are. There's four verses that I want to share with you in this episode. And these verses are really, if I could only get four verses on my tombstone, these would be the ones. Um, because they guide my life. They're kind of like, one of them is my North Star, and then the others are my latitude and my longitude. And the first one's Matthew 6, 33. This is my North Star. Seek first the kingdom. And that's just the first half of it. Seek first the kingdom and all this will be added unto you. And the second verse is Joshua 1, 9. God said, do nothing else, but be strong and courageous. And so that's a latitude for me. Like everything I do, it's got to be, Christ has to be in the center. And everything I do, I want to do it boldly and courageously. And then Romans 5, 3 through 5. Not only this, but we rejoice in our suffering, knowing that our suffering leads to endurance and our endurance leads to character and our character leads to hope for other men. AKA, if you and I can decide to just be the men that rejoice in our suffering, that's going to build endurance in us. If we get enough endurance, we're going to build character. Character is like muscle. And muscle is the thing that other men notice. Like if they notice character in you, that's going to give them hope because they say, hey, if that guy did it, I can do it too. Especially if that guy is like, hey, man, come on over here and let me tell you how I did it. This is the process of becoming a dangerous man and discipling other men into doing that. And then the last one is James 1.12. I want you guys to go study this. And this is what my whole life is predicated off of. I believe when, when we get to heaven, if you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your, your name will be in the Lamb's book of life. And then you'll move on. But before you get to heaven, God will judge you and he'll open up the book of works. And everything you did in your life will be in that book, except for your sins. They will be redacted by the blood of Jesus Christ. But your time, your talents, and your treasures, you're going to be judged by. And I want to make sure that the thing that I use my life, like what I do in my lifetime, I want to make sure I'm doing what matters to God. And God, two things matter a lot to God. If you love him and you love his children, and this is one of the ways that I'm loving you because I want you to live your best life. So I want to read you something that um, I actually have printed out and I keep it taped to my mirror. It's a poem called, called Choose Your Heart. And a lot of people who maybe have heard me speak have heard me share this before, but I just think it's really powerful and I want to share it with you. Being your best is hard. Being normal is hard. Making wise decisions is hard. Making bad decisions is hard. Being in shape is hard. Being out of shape is hard. Losing weight is hard. Being fat is hard. Working out is hard. Being weak is hard. Being disciplined is hard. Being lazy is hard. Getting outside of your comfort zone 
and doing more than, than deciding is hard. Staying in your comfort zone is hard. Starting a business is hard. Working for somebody else is hard. Making a lot of money is hard. Making a little bit of money is hard. Being rich is hard. Being poor is hard. Having great relationships is hard. Having bad relationships is hard. Having friends is hard. Having no friends is hard. I know this one well. Fighting for your marriage is hard. Divorce is hard. Having a lot of things is hard. Having nothing is hard. Living on purpose, hear me when I say this, is hard. But living off purpose is hard. Doing life God's way is hard. Doing life any other way is hard. Everything is hard. You got to choose your heart. And so if you don't have your declaration of independence, I prepared one for you. And I've also prepared it in the form of a prayer. And I want you to say this out loud. I don't care if you're in a gym. I don't care if you're in the car. Do more than decide. Take action and say these words out loud. And if you do pray this prayer, I want you to send me a text message because I want to start a relationship with you. I want to know who the dangerous men are out there. And I expect to get a lot of text messages, but I don't want to receive one text message for somebody who just wants to be buddies. If you're about that, come into the smoke, man. Choose your heart and repeat these words. I am a prophet. I am a priest. I am a king. I am a warrior. I live by a code based on God's word. I am a dangerous man in the kingdom. I, I am unapologetically committing my life to King Jesus. I believe that he is the son of God. I believe that he overcame the grave. I repent of my sins and I receive him as my Lord and savior. I receive full power, authority, and sonship in the name of Jesus. Christ paid a price for me. And today, today I choose my heart. If you prayed that prayer and you said that out loud, I want you to text message me. 949-763-5934. Make sure that you text message me the word dangerous because I want to have a conversation with you and I actually have some resources for you on how to continue your journey to becoming your dangerous man. Because right now, right here, you made a decision and you took action and I celebrate that. I honor that. But the work is not done. Now the training begins. You'll never meet a Navy SEAL that isn't, isn't constantly in his process because for the rest of his life, when people meet him and they find out he's a Navy SEAL, he will be the measuring stick of every man that he meets. Well, that's you now. You've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You are a Christian now. Angels are rejoicing in heaven, but now the game really begins because every single person that you meet, you have no idea. You might be the only version of Jesus Christ that they ever get to meet. So I applaud you, I honor you. But the game just started, man. Text me, 949-763-5934. Text me the, the word dangerous. And I think we'll also put like a, a link in the show notes or um, however that works on YouTube and podcast. But shoot me a text. And the other thing that I wanted to do while I'm welcoming you into the lifestyle of the dangerous is I want to, let me move my mic. I want to give you an opportunity to, dude, make that, make more than that declaration, man. Make a billboard out of yourself. I literally have a dozen of these t-shirts and it's pretty much the only t-shirt that I wear. If you ever see me speaking on a stage, if they ask me to wear a suit, my answer is always the same thing. This is my uniform, man. This is my message. And this is what I'm here to talk about and who I'm here to talk about. So yeah, it'll be leadership. It'll be mindset. It'll be focus. It'll be discipline, but everything will circle back to why I'm on this planet because I'm living a purpose-driven life, not a mission-driven life. It's not about Super Bowls. It's not about money. It's not about clout. It's about you. I'm here to love God and love his children. And I believe this is the best way that I can do this in this season of my life. So if this podcast episode spoke to you, or you want to get one of these t-shirts, click the link in the show notes. I believe the website is jesusiskingshirt.com. Um, and just so you know, we're using these profits to push the kingdom forward um, through the different ministry uh, missions that we have. So I appreciate you guys supporting us and supporting the show. And one other thing, um, this is what I drink all day, every single day. These are branch chain amino acids, and this is also my supplement company. So if you want to support the show and support our mission, this is one way that you can do it. Go over there and get you some branch chain amino acids. These are watermelon and every single supplement that we have at Veritas Labs. Um, is 100% all natural. They're 100% organic. And there's some of the supplements that I give to my kids, like our Hulk juice, eat superfoods inside of it. So we'll put a link in the show notes for that, but share this episode, man. I appreciate and celebrate all of you guys who became dangerous men today. So this one's to you. Cheers. And we'll see you guys in the next episode.